Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently we are in the prophecy of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and the last book of our journey through the entire Bible. Uh, we're in chapter 3, and uh, we only got a few more studies in Malachi. Um, so the last time we was talking about God posed the question, and as the Lord does his style, you see when he deals with us, and I'm going to say, well, he, I, when he deals with us, um, and, and again, you can see patience and long-suffering, but, you know, he, you know he's the Lord. In other words, if God was to come face to face, there would be no doubt you would, you would tremble in his presence. But oftentimes, too, he, he also takes the reasoning route, you know, and so there's, he asks you a question, right? And obviously he knows the answer, but he, the, the idea is to, to get dialogue going, to get thought going, okay? Now, the last thing he posed, he said, your, your words were harsh against me. You say, what is it? it's useless serving the Lord. Now, I said, you know, if I was God, I'd push back on that and say, oh, really? And, and in a lot of respects, he has, because remember, this entire letter is, in a sense, rebuke of Israel for not following the Lord. Uh, they claim that we have been following you, but he said, no, nah, you haven't, right? But then they come back with this, well, you know, it's useless to serve the Lord. Look at the wicked. They are prospering. Not only that, but they test God and they get away with it. They escape. Nothing happens to them. We, 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 we do something wrong and we get judged, but look at them. So, and sometimes, and again, even now, just naturally, we think that way, right? Um, that... <laughs> we think now I, I'm, a, I'm a manager and I, I can tell you whenever you confront people when they're doing something wrong the first thing they're going to do is well, well what about them How, why are they getting away with it and then my reply is you're kind of assuming that they are but <clears throat> that's neither here nor there we're talking about you but this is what Israel was doing, that this notion that um, um, how is it that you're going to, um, let, me, let me put it up. He says, your words against me are harsh, says the Lord, yet you ask, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve God. What if what have we gained by keeping His requirements and walking more uh, mournfully before the Lord of Hosts? Now it's kind of interesting because remember you're talking about um, a fifteen hundred year period of time, nearly right, from the time if you, if you track from the time of Moses, about fifteen hundred years, and um, if they look at how God blessed them and why they weren't blessed, God could say, we can literally go back. <laughs> and by the way, you already have the history, uh, your history of how and why you have failed. So he said, um, you have said it is useless to serve God. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord? So now consider the arrogant so now we consider the arrogant to be fortunate. Not only do those who commit wickedness prosper, they even test God and escape. Verse 16. He says, At that time, those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. The Lord took notice and listened. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who feared Yahweh had high regard for his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, a special possession. 
on the day I am preparing. I would have compassion on them as a man has compassion on his sons who serve him. And you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve the Lord and the ones who does not. Now, this is a very interesting clapback or response to their complaints. It's a, it's a bogus complaint. First of all, it's a bogus complaint that they're acting as if they have been walking in the, in the way of the Lord. And actually, they haven't. So now God says, um, those who fear the Lord, and he makes this difference between those who fear the Lord and then those who don't. Um, now, what's interesting, he makes this statement here. So... A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear Yahweh and had regard for his name. We, we see this, what is called the book or books. Uh, in Revelation chapter 20, it says the books were open. Now, whether this is kind of in terms of figurative or an actual literal book that God keeps, um, you know, is it, is, it, is it a giant book or volumes a book? <laughs> um, I, I don't think we should go, go that far. But the idea here is that, notice he said that this book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the, the Yahweh's name. So this one is with the book of those who fear the Lord. There is a book for those who um, have not feared the Lord. There is another scripture that talks about the books were open in those, or it makes reference to people. I'm trying to think what scripture it is. And it talks about certain actions, wicked actions that they do. And it says, and, it, and, and the description of them is, those who names were not written down in the book of the life before the foundation of the world. So there, there were some very interesting things about this book or books, as it is referred to, different types of books that have different things in them that pertains to judgment. That when people say, um, we think about our law, right? How if records are kept, the, the, the records are kept, and a lot of times records are kept forever when it comes to the law. That when you go to court, here is the record. Um, part of the work of a police officer is they must write the law, right? Must write things down, have uh, tedious, have tedious, uh, notes and reports, or they're supposed to, right? Well, God is keeping tedious records, <laughs> tedious books, I mean, uh, uh, information, facts about us. In this case, this is a good book. Notice he says, and at, the, and at that time, those who fear the Lord, Okay, spoke to one another. Then the Lord took notice and listened. Okay, they spoke, right? And I don't know what they particularly spoke about, but they fear the Lord or reverence the Lord. And then it says, um, and the Lord listened. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that's kind of embedded in here that as God is communicating to us, he knows. <laughs> uh, he knows, okay? He knows your deepest secrets. So he says here, those who fear the Lord uh, are in this book of remembrance, right? Um, uh, it says, then the Lord took notice, so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear Yahweh and had high regard for his name. 
And then he says, they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. And then he says, a special possession on the day I am preparing. Now, um, here it has to be, I would say that we, who he is referring to is Israel. Okay, so uh, a special possession. And then it could be, because remember in this chapter, he's been talking about the Levite. So when he says, a special possession on the day I am preparing. And then he says, I'll have compassion on them as a man has compassion on his son who serves him. Now, I can't help but also notice that, and I'm not going to say that this is, this just kind of popped in my head. You remember the story about the prodigal son? Now, the word prodigal simply means wasteful son. We could, we could say the wasteful son. Now, people have made the term prodigal into really something different. But we could say it, the word prodigal simply means wasteful. So you had two sons. And what is interesting about the parable of that, it, it, it really seemed to kind of showcase Israel versus the Gentiles. The Gentiles um, being the wasteful. But in, at any rate, the prodigal son, the wasteful son, went out and spent his inheritance, right? While the other son stayed, the older son, okay, stayed at home. He was faithful. When the prodigal son returned and came to himself, the Lord, the father threw a big fatted, uh, I mean, party for him. And one of the things that the older son said was, I have been faithful with you all along. Why are you throwing a party for him? He said, for that reason, you've been faithful to me. You've always been with me. I, I, I don't know. I just thought of that. Now, again, I'm not saying that that's what this means. When he said the sons who serve me, that, that's what popped in my head. Okay. So then he goes on and says, see, you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. And then he says, between one, between one who serves the Lord and the one who does not serve him. The one who does not serve him obviously won't be in the book, the book of remembrance here. It is important to understand, however, when we talk about judgment, that it always comes down between those, the, uh, between the righteous and the wicked. And oftentimes people will question the Lord. I mean, they will question and say, well, how, um, how is it, it's, how is judgment going to happen? And it's almost like what we've seen before when we go up here. When they said uh, it is useless to serve God, what have we gained by keeping his requirement? The deception here is they deluded themselves into thinking that they have kept the requirement. Now, there are also those that don't care about keeping the requirement. They are just wicked. And I believe when we come to the end, that all of the righteous religious pretense will be stripped away. And you're going to just see people just, I hate God. I, I acknowledge to the God. I reject him. In our kind of culture, we've kind of manufactured this, this kind of notion that there's this struggle between good and evil, between God and the devil. And the devil's winning, you know, and at the end of the battle, the devil is going to say, I won God because I got more souls. And eh, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> not at all. Um, but notice what will become apparent, what will come manifest is the difference between the righteous 
and the wicked. And notice he said between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. See, and that's 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 the difference there. That's the difference. So this idea of what we call right and wrong. What, you, what we call right and wrong, when you really strip away, I could say, the religious pretense and all that kind of stuff, that, that's what's going to come out, the difference between those who serve the Lord and those who don't, between the righteous and the wicked. I'm going to start this. He says, for indeed, a day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the arrogant and everyone who commits wickedness will become stubble. So the term, when it says the day, I often say, remember that the term, the day of the Lord, always refers to that period of time. It's not a 24-hour cycle. It is a period of time in which God is going to judge. Now, kind of going back, let's go back to this little statement right here. When it says uh, in verse 15, he says, they even test God and escape. And, you know, so I, I remember one time there was a, there, there was a, I was on a, working a phone bank and the person called in and he said, I just want you to ask God one thing for me. Just one thing, just one thing. And by the way, since then, a couple of other people have asked me the same thing. And and so there's there's this mindset that's out there that, okay, I would believe God. Just, just let him answer one thing. Why don't he just show himself? Why don't he just take away all the evil in the world? Why can't he do that? Just take away all the evil. And so like I tell people, that's really not the problem. There is a day coming when he will take away all the evil. That day is coming. But what he is working on now is taking the evil away from you. And so your question is going to be, why are you rejecting him? Why won't you believe him? Why won't you submit to him? You're talking about what he's doing in the world. And as we see here, he is going to come and take away the evil. He's That day is coming when God will speak. That day is coming. So what you need to worry about is, what is God saying to you today, right now? Okay. What is he saying to you? All right, we'll pick back up this guy in the next study. Uh, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. And I'll see you in the next study.